Okay. Welcome. welcome to <laughs> you, you welcome people. Welcome everyone to our Chaos Common Metric Working Group meeting on August, no, on October 3rd, 2019. <laughs> okay, let's, let's delete and start over. No, just kidding. <laughs> For the, the three views that we get typically on these, I'm sure we'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you go to the last <laughs> week, the 19th, the geography metrics, that Google Doc right there. Yep. Got it. So if you go there, I went ahead and um, just kind of rounded this out, and I thought maybe we could kind of put some closure to this today. Okay. So I, um, I went ahead and I updated the headings, and don't mind the bolding and the italicizing just because I, I was just doing that so we could visually see what's going on here. Um, but I updated it to the way that we've been talking about headings in the cool. project as a whole. And then a lot of thanks goes to the folks at Berkia and Remora Lab who have spent time, I honestly think the last, was it the last two meetings, Georg? Yeah trying to think through this metric and they provided some, what I believe to be like completely proper and helpful visualizations. And so that's, that's there. Yeah. That looks great. Yeah. And then tools providing the metric. I have not heard anything from Augur, so I removed it. And so clearly Grimoire lab is doing this or it's possible in Grimoire lab. And that's, I mean, that's about it. And I'm, so I don't know what people think. To me, this is good. I think it's a simpler way of presenting metrics. I think it's just, here's the description, here's the objective, and here's some ways of looking at it. And that's, and that's it. We're not losing people in these long discussions about so one question that I have is we have two different options for looking at time. And one is local time of the contributor and one is universal time, global time. Okay. Yep. Are um, the graphs different, Georg? The graphs will be different depending on which one we choose. Okay. And so the question is whether in the description or filters we want to mention when to use which and what they mean, whether you look at the local time or the global time. And I assume in Grimoire Lab it's fairly easy to set it up one way or the other. Yes. So in Grimoire Lab, that's something you you pick whether you want to display the time as local time or whether you want to display it as UTC, or are they used in different parts of the visualizations? You have to choose which date you use for the visualization. Okay. So it's a matter of selecting which data you visualize, whether you visualize the local time corrected by the time zone, or you're looking UTC time of all contributions. And so the difference that I see is if you're looking at the local time, then you see whether people in their own time zone tend to spend more time on it during the day, office hours, or evenings, free time as a general way to look at it. And then if we use UTC, then we can see basically where in the time zone, which time zone basically gets most activity. Although that we can also look at which time zones get activity, which is different. So if you look, if you use the local time zone, um, Let's say I, I make a commit at 8 o'clock in London. You make a commit at 8 o'clock in Omaha. 
Um, does that show up at the same time? Because we both did that at eight o'clock our local time. That's if we used local time, yes. Yeah. And, I think it's and different. then if we used UTC time, if I committed something at eight o'clock, uh, you know, I'm basically in, kind of in UTC time. Um, and then you committed something at eight o'clock um, Nebraska time, it would, yeah. those would be wildly different times that would be offset by, what is it? Correct. Five hours or yeah. something. Okay. So I think that's a differentiation that we should document. Yeah, that's a really good, a really good point. Would that Where, be a filter? That's what I was just going to ask. Because we, we have aggregation of time by time zone. I wonder if we want to blow that out just a little bit and talk about how you can either aggregate the data by local time or aggregate the data by UTC time and what that means. Would you agree, Garrick, that that's more of a filter? Because it's the time, like the metric is stored the same way either way. Yeah, I think it's a filter. Like that. Is there a document anywhere that describes how how that's done? I'm wondering if we can. I mean, because it's it's not necessarily intuitive unless you're used to looking at this type of data. Um, done in Grimoire Lab? Yeah, or, or somewhere else. Somebody talks about the, the differences between the two. It might be useful to link to a doc with a bit more context to this, if we had one. If not, we could probably, I don't know, put some description around it or footnote or something, I guess. I'm thinking that could be a nice pointer just to a reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, for a resource. What I'm thinking about, based on what we're asking, is in the evolution metrics, we included a description of how to generate this metric in Grimo Lab. So, which fields to use and um, how to build the visualization, basically. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm going to... Yeah, that, that could be uh, basically anything that explains the difference between these two, because I think people will look at that and not... without being able to ask questions, wouldn't necessarily know exactly what this is, what this means. We could point them to this recording. <laughs> Watch this video, and then you'll understand how the time works. <laughs> I'm looking if there's anything online, like even just a page that, yeah, you know, that describes what Georg was talking about. It's always well, just big time zone things. Okay, or are you suggesting that in the tools providing metric, you do have a description at that point? Sorry, I had a hard time hearing you. Can you repeat that, please? I saw you put that comment about having a description on how to build the metric. Yeah. Do you think that description would go, you had highlighted tools providing metric. Is that where it would go, you think? Uh, so, yes, I think that's the best place for it. Okay. That way, when you come to this metric, and you see our amazing visualizations mm -hmm. and get step-by-step step how to actually build them. Okay. I ask partly for this, but partly is um, 
if we start applying the new structure to say evolution metrics, how that might play out. Yeah, if we look at the metric that I linked to, in yeah. it has it under no implementations, which is. Yep, tools uh, that provide this thing. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. And I'm, I'm torn a little bit between putting it into the metric versus just linking to Seagulls or another place. Um, for one, because it's, we're just describing the metric here and then we can describe how to implement it elsewhere. But at the same time, if you come to this metric, you just want to know how to use it having some step-by-steps right here. They're not long. So anyway, I'm torn a little bit and I can go either way. Um, if the if you pointed them out to some tooling, Icremore Lab, I mean, is it just pointing to the tooling kind of broadly or is it some way? Right, because we don't currently describe anywhere how to build this visualization. Okay. Um, obviously, I'm always, I, I'm not a huge fan of putting steps into documents because if anything changes in Grimoire Lab, like a new release, the, the steps might change and then we have to backfill that. So I, I had expressed this stuff in the evolution meetings a long time ago. Um, but I mean, I guess if we're, if we're versioning the metrics, and part of versioning would just say, hey, the new version includes a new set of steps. So maybe it is fair to include it here, particularly if it's not that long. Yeah. Do we need steps for creating the visualization? I thought the visualizations are more just um, so people can see how it's used, more of an example. Or did I miss something? Yeah, so I think it's about the steps that would be undertaken to differentiate between local time and UTC. Oh, I see, I see, I see which might then kind of address your concern of just giving some people a little bit more understanding of what, what we're talking about here. Yeah. At the top. So I'd say maybe go ahead and provide the step scaler if it's not too much trouble. Uh, yes. The yeah. other option would be to show two different visualizations one for UTC and one for local for a relatively small project that makes it kind of obvious what the difference is. I don't know if you even have an example that would that would be like that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm waiting for the um, for the latest update on the dashboard on the Chaos dashboard because in the next update, we will have support for this metric out of the box. Whereas right now it's not out of the box. So describing the steps right now is more difficult. When will that be done? With the next update, whenever that will be. That'll be before FOSDEM, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm thinking sometime October. <laughs> <laughs> So but plenty I mean, of time to do this yeah. before we release it. No, yeah, no stress about doing it right now. Yeah. So how about that? Because then we can just point out to, to it this metric in practice. Mm -hmm. And particularly if it's part of a release. Does that work OK? Word? Yeah. OK. Anything else on this metric? I think it's mostly done. Cool. I would say to maybe this issue. Um, Georg, the other thing I would like to add to the agenda for um, either for October 17th or for a future meeting is kind of similar to what I've added for, for Sean, because I know that Grimoire Labs, like with this metric, has a bunch of stuff that's uh, common metrics that are already implemented that are in the software that we've never bothered to define. Yeah. 
And so I'm, I'm wondering if it would be possible for you to kind of um, take this back to somebody at Liturgia or, or just do this yourself and come up with, even if it's just a list, uh, like a subset, like a list of a few that we could work on that you could kind of describe, you know, show us how they're implemented in the software and that we can um, define for the next release. Yeah, I understand the question. Yeah. What we did at the evolution working group, I think two weeks ago, was to um, um, go through the data that Greenlab currently has, and I'm looking at the link right now. Um, we call it the schema. I'm going to post the link here in the chat. So the Grimoire Lab data schema and it's organized mostly around the different data sources. And then some of them are combined between data sources. And so from there, we can define metrics that use the data as they are here. Cool. I wonder if we could maybe pick a few, maybe even if it's just like like maybe three to five that fit within common metrics and maybe are ones that you know are used a lot by people who use Grimoire Lab, so like maybe popular ones. And we could try to define those and see, just see how this works, kind of validate my my thinking around this. Yeah. Um. Not necessarily right now. This is something we can think about. Um. I mean, if I just look at the Git CSV. Yep. I mean, when I start thinking about like uh, names of people, like author. That seems like it would be, you know, author name. Mm -hmm. Row 10. Yeah. That seems like a very likely candidate. And we're already doing author or name, which is the next one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would be another. We have organizational affiliation. Is that that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. So um, GitHub repo seems like a good one. Another mm -hmm. candidate for me to know where the work is being done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can have a nice um, heat map where the activity is happening and which repos. Yeah, actually, those two right out of the gate, some sort of author some name of a person, and mm -hmm. then a location of activity, like the repo. Yeah. Location. Those make a ton of sense from a common perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. What was the other one? Yeah. What about 
labels. So in row 41, we have repository labels. And this is something that we use for grouping repositories and defining projects. So if you go to the chaos work, um, the chaos dashboard, the working groups have their own label, um, which for example, allows to have the mailing list and the repo for the DNI working group to easily filter by that. So it's, I don't know if it's a metric or just a tool for filtering to be able to tag and label data. And you said that was the repo label that you were talking about on yep. 41? Okay. I was just adding these to the agenda for next time. Yeah. So we said author name, repository name. What was the, what's the other one we were just talking about? Repo label. Repo label. No, the one before that, the one you mentioned first. Oh, no, that you got it all. Oh author. yeah, that's right. It was repository. Cool. Yeah, the one called GitHub repo. Yeah. Okay. I don't understand the difference. <laughs> Maybe that's okay. Okay. Those cool. could be free to start. Those would be great because then combined with uh, the one we just did. Mm -hmm. And then isn't Brian sort of working on one too? He had or, been or, he had been working on the organizational affiliation, but I think we Daniel was working on one. Daniel was working on one. He was working on time to response. Okay. Or responsiveness metrics. Yes. I think in general, of which several are in here as well. Where, where are you? Oh, uh, yeah, if you look at the, so, um, well. There's time stamping. There's time to commit hours, but now looking at that's that's the time from when the commit was originally created to when the commit was made to the repository. Is that the difference between the time like I commit it to my local fork and it gets merged into the project? Is that the difference there? Do you, do you know, Garrick? I don't. I think what we, we want to go after is pull requests at that point where we can get time to create pull requests and time to merge pull requests. I don't oh, I see. That's a different CSV file. Got it. Um, in Git, I don't think GitHub has that differentiation between authored and committed. Yeah, I didn't think so either, which is why I was kind of curious what that meant in the GitHub CSV. I think it comes into play when you have patches that are distributed via email and then merge manually. I don't think GitHub <sighs> Oh, 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 I see, I see. So like the Linux kernel model. Yeah. Okay. Um, but this pull request one does have several of the um, responsiveness metrics that we were talking about with Daniel. So time open days, time to close days, time to merge request response. What row are you on? Uh, are you fifth, on? I'm yes. in the pull requests CSV, oh. uh, starting at row 54. I see. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those all seem like candidates around response. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we can start with pull requests and then generalize it from there because responsiveness also exists in email chains and other things. Issues. Yeah, issues. Uh, there's all kinds of responsiveness metrics we could use. Cool.
Okay, so maybe we will tackle those next time. And I will, um, for next time too, what I'll do is I'm gonna, I'll go back through the re metrics that were released last time and try to rework them under the new headings. Yep. So those are done. Okay. I'm going to slowly start doing this for all working groups. Actually, I'm going to move these out of the agenda for next week and put them in the minutes. Okay. Just because I think that we, since we continue to talk about them. Okay. Um. Cool. One of the interesting feature requests that we'll probably be implementing in the next couple of months is to track progress of issues that are managed through the GitHub projects user interface, where you can have a Kanban and you mm -hmm. can see how the issues are moving through the different stages of the Kanban. Um, oh, that would be interesting. We yeah. use the GitHub project boards quite a lot in um, Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a feature request from a potential customer that still needs to sign on, but if they sign on, we will develop that feature. Nice. Yeah. I have never seen these. Did what? I pro the, the project boards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How long have they been around? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we've been using them in Kubernetes for close to a year. Oh, geez. I don't remember not using them as part of the project. Yeah, sure. I probably know than I used it last year. Yeah, I mean, it's a really nice way to keep track of things when you're working on something big. So we use them for, um, for the conferences, for sure. So the contributor summits, when we organize those, because those are organized by the Kubernetes community. Um, and so we track lots of stuff in the, in the boards for those. And, and I know can, they use them for other stuff within the community as well. Issues, you can link issues in them? Yeah, the issues are actually just GitHub issues. So you basically put that issue in the board, and then anytime the issue is updated, it automatically, like, changes show up. Oh, huh. okay. Because it's, cool. it's all sort of integrated. So basically, you tie issues to the board, and GitHub knows where those issues are, and it knows, you know, if things are updated. I look at that. I did not even know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, cool. So we start organizing Chaos Con using those boards? Uh, <laughs> we could. We tend uh, not to create issues for all the stuff we need to do. Oh, the, the other thing we need to do is um, we do need to gather the list of people who've agreed to organize and uh, submit a pull request for that. Yeah. Because I noticed that that was the one thing that's on the, the same page as the CSV, but that we haven't updated. And I wasn't sure if we had a, a list yet. I know it was all kind of an email and I sort of lost track of it. Yep, agreed. <laughs> we did get support from GitLab. Uh, support meaning like a sponsorship? Yep. Sweet. Yep. That's nice. Yeah. Well, and the nice thing about the the EVIS is it's it's way less expensive and it's pretty easy to. I think we're allowed to just like bring stuff, or at least they have in the past. They've just brought snacks, so we just bought stuff and brought it in with us. It was kind of like the Vancouver member out of the university. Mm-hmm. Just brought our own stuff. So. Yeah. Cool. Might be worth double double checking with the hotel so we don't get in trouble. 
Um, we should see how much it costs for the hotel to provide coffee because that would be easier than trying yeah. to lug it. Yeah, for the full day, it's 15 euros per person. Okay. So if we fill up the room with 70 people, we're talking about 1,050. Oh, that's still not bad. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, given okay. what hotel, hotels would charge, it's like thousands of dollars for coffee. <laughs> like, you gotta be kidding me. It's crappy coffee. <laughs> I'd pay thousands of dollars if we're getting cappuccinos, but not, not coffee out of like urns that you have to like. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> so I will, maybe you could stop recording here. We seem like we're done with comments. Oh, yeah, I think we're, we've diverged.